exercise 6.2 The Name Game You are employees of an advertising agency that has been hired by a large automobile manufacturer to create a name for a sports car it has recently designed. Its new two-seat, hard-top convertible is capable of going from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.5 seconds, and sells for approximately $100,000. The typical customer is a successful, male business executive who has plenty of disposable income. In groups of four to five, decide upon a name and advertising slogan for the car. K6.2, Making Assumptions In one of your classes this term, the professor has formed teams of six students to work on a class project together. She has given the teams a lot of latitude to decide what their project will be. During the first meeting, you observe the following dialogue. John says, we know the professor likes projects that collect a lot of data. Let's go with that. Susie says, I know exactly what we should do. My big sis at the Delta House took this class last year, so it would be stupid to do anything else. I'm sure we can all agree with this. Nigel says, I think it's really important that we all get on board with the decision so don't let me be the one to stand in the way of progress. Damon says, we simply can't go wrong with this topic. Fran says, let's not take all day to get ideas on the table. We have two great topics, either one is fine. Let's just choose one and move on. Which common group decision-making mistakes did each member of the team make? And how could they make a better decision? One hundred and thirty three. Chapter seven. Creativity and innovation. Effective problem solving requires creativity in order to identify innovative solutions to complex and ill defined problems. This chapter describes groups that value unique ideas and nurture creativity. We begin by explaining why innovation is important to teams and organizations. Then we define creativity and discuss the characteristics of creative people. Next is a description of the social and organizational contexts that nurture creativity. Finally, we propose brainstorming techniques that can empower groups to think outside the box. Case 7.1, the iPod. Although Apple Computer is known for its creativity and innovation, this has not always been the case. It is difficult to maintain a consistent track record of groundbreaking innovations, and Apple has had its share of problems. British designer Jonathan Ive joined Apple in 1992, with dreams of creating new and innovative products. However, during his first few years at the company, Apple strayed from its original foundation of innovation and imagination, and it began acting as a mere imitator in the market. In essence, Apple had become a follower in the industry. The stagnant corporate culture that had emerged had a negative effect on Ive and his design team, as they were no longer free to experiment and invent. However, when Apple's founder, Steve Jobs, returned to the company after pursuing other business interests, Apple Computer reinvented itself and returned to its prior mission. According to Ive, by re-establishing the core values Jobs had established at the beginning, Apple again pursued a direction which was clear and different from any other company. Design and innovation formed an important part of this new direction. With the re-established culture supporting experimentation and creativity, I've had the opportunity to develop a new standard in music technology. Initially, it was Tony Faddle, a computer engineer with an interest in developing an MP3 player, who came up with the initial idea for the iPod, Connie, 2005. Then it took a team of a dozen designers from all over the globe, including New Zealand, Germany, Italy, and England, to bring the idea to completion. But what made this team so successful? According to Ive, it was the members' fanatical care beyond the obvious stuff, the obsessive attention to details that are often overlooked that allow for creativity to blossom. They were committed to developing a new music player that would redefine the music industry. Working in Teams 134. One of the greatest strengths of the team was its inquisitiveness, Burroughs, 2006. 
It was this curiosity and sense of exploration that led members to consult with a wide range of people such as engineers, marketing specialists, and other manufacturers. During one of their trips to Asia, they observed the manufacturing technique of layering colored plastic over other materials that would become the signature look for iPods and iMacs. Even Jobs, CEO of Apple, contributed to the project. He met with developers on a daily basis to contribute to the product design and interface. Jobs was obsessed with intuitiveness and ease of use, demanding that a song be accessible in less than three clicks. Interestingly, the iPod prototype was made almost entirely from existing parts Apple bought from other companies, including the internal units from Portal Player, the battery from Sony, and the hard drive from Toshiba, to name a few. Connie, 2005. The design team was able to look at the same pieces that other companies had produced and envision a different configuration that would change the industry. On October 23, 2001, at 10 a.m. Jobs announced the iPod's arrival, and the rest, as they say, is history. Ive and his design team helped Apple restore its image as the iconic, innovative company it is today. Case Study Discussion Questions 1. Why has the iPod been so successful? What are its most innovative design features? 2. How did Steve Jobs create an atmosphere at Apple for creativity to flourish? 3. What was the benefit of using a team versus an individual to develop the iPod? 4. How did Steve Jobs' leadership style affect the development of the iPod? In today's fast-paced and global economy, organizations must be innovative in order to survive, Hesselbein and Johnston, 2002. The most successful organizations are efficient, adaptable, and able to generate novel ideas as market conditions change. Innovation has become the new route to financial success, Hamel and Skrzynski, 2002. Products and services that are commonplace today, such as iPods, Facebook, and online banking, simply did not exist a decade ago. With rapidly evolving technologies driving much of the change, organizations have had to abandon the status quo and stretch themselves in order to compete in the new global market. In addition to leveraging technology, diversity has also become a competitive advantage for organizations. Diverse teams and organizations are able to take advantage of novel perspectives that result from demographic, gender, educational, or functional diversity, and generate ideas that normally would not surface within a homogeneous group, Cox and Blake, 1991. Improvisation is the ability to invent or compose something in real time with little or no preparation. For example, when well-trained jazz musicians play together, the results can be unpredictable, exciting, and spectacular. The complex and fluid interpersonal context that exists in a jazz session can be compared to the modern workplace. Now, 1996. Just as the most exciting bands will incorporate unusual and novel rhythms into their music, the most successful businesses will utilize their diverse resources to come up with new and innovative ideas. Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 135 Complex problems that confront organizations and teams are often poorly defined, and ill-structured, Van Gundy, 1984. While proven routines and formulas may be effective for simple or previously encountered problems, the more challenging and often unforeseen situations of today require thinking that is outside the box. These unstructured problems do not have a set of proven guidelines to follow, and the problem itself can be difficult even to define and articulate. For example, how much should a manufacturing company invest in robotics in order to be competitive in the next decade? What are the most cost-effective, yet family-friendly policies to embrace as an organization? How can we use science and technology to end the cycle of poverty in Africa? In sum, diverse groups that invite creativity and integrate the creative contributions of their members have the potential to find novel solutions to complex problems that exist in turbulent times. Creativity Creativity can be difficult to define and even more difficult to facilitate. Thompson, 2004, suggests that, T, in creativity is the holy grail of teamwork. Everyone wants it, 
but very few people know where to look for it or how to set up the conditions to make it happen. Page 178. For the purposes of this text, we will define creativity as the process by which original and useful ideas are produced. Rowe, 2004, Thompson, 2004. Individuals and groups may generate unusual ideas that might even border on the bizarre, but if those ideas have no practical use, they are of limited value. Creative ideas that are original and usable, however, don't have to be of the magnitude of an Einstein, Picasso, or Da Vinci to be creative. The same process that creates a Mona Lisa can generate a brilliant new marketing strategy or innovative way to reduce expenses, a mobile, 1990. Creative solutions lead to innovation and change because they are able to go beyond existing perspectives, Woodman, Sawyer, and Griffin, 1993. E. Paul Torrance, a dominant figure in the field of creativity research, is well known for the development of creativity assessments. His assessments are the gold standard in educational settings, elementary, secondary, and post-secondary, and non-educational settings alike, there, 1993. Torrance, 1988, defines creative thinking as the process of sensing difficult eyes, problems, gaps in information, missing elements something askew, making guesses and formulating hypotheses about these deficiencies, evaluating and testing these guesses and hypotheses, possibly revising and retesting them, and finally communicating the results, page 47. Thus, the first step in the creative process is Working in Teams 136 Seeing the problem accurately. Similarly, Chek Sant Mihaly, 1990, argues that the way one defines the nature of a problem is one of the most important components of the creative process. After all, identifying and defining the problem determines the quality and effectiveness of the solution. Many theorists associate creativity with divergent thinking or the ability to generate multiple perspectives and unconventional ideas. Bear, 1993. Old conceptualizations and judgments are suspended in favor of generating a variety of possibilities. Divergent thinking is expansive and resists convention. It looks for alternatives that are not often apparent at first glance. Air, 1993. For example, when asked to identify all the possible uses of a toothbrush, the most obvious answers have to do with cleaning teeth or other services because that's what we think of when we picture a toothbrush in our mind. But someone who is using divergent thinking might envision a toothbrush as a director's baton, or a paintbrush, or a back scratcher. These answers are outside the conventional box that is normally associated with the concept of a toothbrush and, thus, qualify as divergent perspectives. Convergent thinking, by contrast, suggests that there is one right way to go about any given task, and that the primary job of the team is to find that right way. Chapter 6 described a process of informational processing called the ladder of inference. In this model, individuals use exiting cognitive categories to make sense of incoming data. For example, based upon years of schooling, most people know what to expect when they walk into a classroom. Mental models of proper classroom behavior help to reduce anxiety and guide behavior. But those existing mental models can be restrictive and prevent people from seeing outside of their existing frames of reference. Thinking outside the box requires the ability to question assumptions and take risks. Those who can think divergently have less rigid and less structured internal categories. This is important because individuals and teams that resist convention and expand their thinking have more possibilities to consider in solving any particular problem. According to Guilford, 1967, there are four different ways to think divergently. Fluency is the ability to produce a large number of ideas for understanding or solving problems. For example, the iPod design team might have come up with 40 different music player platforms and delivery systems that it needed to consider before settling on the iPod. Flexibility is the ability to produce ideas in a variety of categories. The iPod designers might have considered a number of music delivery systems including hardware solutions, software solutions, and phone-based platforms. These three categories are very different from one another and demonstrate flexibility. 
Originality is the ability to produce unusual or unique ideas. If the design team suggested a variation of existing technology, it would not be very novel. A more original idea was for designers to think outside the box for a system that went far beyond existing MP3 players. Elaboration is the ability to develop ideas by generating details and depth. Creative ideas may not seem very usable at first glance. Elaboration is the ability to develop abstract ideas into realistic solutions that can be implemented successfully. In order to bring their Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 137 Product to Market The iPod designers had to create an innovative manufacturing process that advanced technology while keeping costs within reasonable levels. The most vexing problems facing groups today resist easy answers. As Senga, 1990, suggests, today's problems are often the result of yesterday's well meaning yet ill conceived solutions. Groups that encourage creativity are able to avoid superficial solutions by generating and evaluating a greater number of possibilities. Divergent thinking helps groups consider a plethora of possible outcomes that can lead to better outcomes. Convergent thinking can then narrow down the options, and decide upon the best course of action. Characteristics of Creative People In order to understand creativity, Researchers have studied the lives of creative people in a variety of contexts including art, literature, music, science, and organizations, on Mobile, 1990, Dacey and Lennon, 1998, Gardner, 1988, 1993. Interestingly, Gardner, 1988, found that creativity is tied to specific domains or tasks. Some creative acts require expertise in language. Others require logical problem-solving ability, and still others require specialized spatial skills. Being a creative genius in one area does not mean that a person will be creative in other areas. For example, a world-renowned ballerina might not be able to apply her creativity to the world of commerce, and become an innovative, successful CEO. Different tasks and domains require different types of knowledge, expertise, and skills to produce results that are truly effective and unique. Thus, domain-specific knowledge is one of the first characteristics common to creative individuals. Mobile, 1990. Subject Knowledge Creative genius is grounded upon a foundation of knowledge and technical skill. One can hardly imagine the brilliance of a Galileo or a Michelangelo without rigorous training and expertise in their disciplines. Thompson, 2004 speculates that it takes 10 years of experience within any given area for an individual to gain enough expertise and understanding to make major leaps in creativity. Although existing knowledge and expertise can hinder individuals from seeing new and fresh perspectives, it is also difficult to make innovative advances without any knowledge at all, Woodman, Sawyer, and Griffin, 1993. According to Amabel, 1990, this knowledge can be derived from innate cognitive abilities, perceptual skills, and both formal and informal education. Characteristics of Creative People 1. Knowledgeable 2. Intrinsically Motivated 3. Comfortable with Ambiguity 4. Willing to Take Risks Working in Teams 138. Knowledge acquisition is often influenced by curiosity, and a love for learning. Albert Einstein was reported to have said that he had no special talents apart from passionate curiosity, Hoffman, 1972. Creative people acquire knowledge because they desire to understand and make sense of the world around them. Thus, the desire to learn for the sheer pleasure of learning is a trait common to creative people. They are curious about life, in general, while also being committed to their own specific discipline. Intrinsic Motivation For most people, creativity takes effort. The most significant creative achievements take long-term dedication and hard work. Intrinsic motivation can provide the perseverance that is often necessary to achieve results, Csikszentmihalyi, 1990. 
Amabel, 1985, 1990, explored the relationship between motivation and creativity by enlisting 72 young adults to write two brief poems. The first poem functioned as a pretest, while the second poem was the post-test. Before writing the second poem, approximately one-third of the participants were asked to complete a seven-item questionnaire that prompted them to think about intrinsic motivations for writing a high-quality poem such as deriving personal satisfaction or enjoyment from their work. Another third was given a questionnaire that asked questions about extrinsic motivation such as making money or achieving recognized tie-in. The final third, the control group, was not given any questionnaire. The questionnaires were used by the researchers to prime the participants and influence the type of motivation that was used to write their poems. After each participant wrote his or her two poems, a panel of 12 literary experts rated each of the poems on a 40-point creativity scale. The initial poems of the three groups of participants were rated at about the same level of creativity, ranging from 18.18 .18 to 18.76, as described below. Writers who were prompted by intrinsic questions demonstrated a modest improvement in creativity from the first poem to their second but not enough for statistical significance. Interestingly, the intrinsic group performed at about the same level of creativity as the group without any questionnaire, suggesting that all the writers were intrinsically motivated at the beginning of the experiment. People, by nature, want to improve their No prompt Intrinsic prompt Extrinsic prompt Pretest 18.18 18.76 18.19 Post-test 18.78 19.88 15.74 Table 7.1 The relationship between motivation and creativity Source Adapted from La Mobile, 1985-1990 Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 139 Performance on Repetitive Tasks But the levels of creativity demonstrated by those who were exposed to extrinsic prompts were significantly lower than their original poem, and also lower than the other two groups' second poem. In other words, the extrinsic prompts had a detrimental effect on levels of creativity. This decline may have occurred because external rewards and judgments undermine the pure enjoyment and satisfaction that can come from the work itself. The results indicate that introducing extrinsic rewards for individuals who are intrinsically motivated can have a detrimental effect on creativity. Tolerance for Ambiguity One of the most important traits of creative people is that they have a tolerance for ambiguity, Zinazny, Besenkin, and Lubart. 2008. Innovation and creativity are often born out of confusion, and sometimes even out of desperation. An ambiguous situation is one in which no framework exists to help direct one's decisions and actions. Dacey and Lennon, 1998, page 98. History is replete with examples of tortured poets, musicians, and artists whose greatest accomplishments happened when they broke from convention, and forged their own paths. Since there are no maps or trail markers on the road less traveled, creative individuals must be comfortable with ambiguity, and the uncertainty of not knowing exactly where they are going. In ambiguous situations, people do not have all the facts. There is no clear path upon which to embark. Rules are unclear, and existing procedures are outdated or non-existent. For many, this produces great anxiety, the unknown can be quite unsettling. But for highly creative people it can be intriguing to attempt to make sense of the confusion, and complexity, Dacey and Lennon, 1998. A tolerance for ambiguity means remaining open-minded and resilient in the face of uncertainty, Shelps and, Harold, and Shelley, 2011. This attitude helps prevent premature and ill-conceived judgments and provides adequate time for creative ideas to emerge. Willingness to take risks Innovation and creativity require the ability to take risks. 
creative individuals are recognized as such because they were willing to communicate their unconventional ideas to others. Most adults are risk-aversive and prefer security to the possibility of rejection, Dacey and Lennon, 1998. Our desire to be accepted and respected often leads us to conform to the expectations of others. However, the play-it-safe principle sometimes hinders creative expression. It is unfortunate to think of the countless number of world-changing ideas, literary triumphs, innovative business plans, life-enhancing inventions, and inspirational songs that lay dormant in the heads of very talented people who were unwilling to take the risk of sharing their ideas with others. Creative people are not restrained by social convention. They are willing to appear unusual or odd. Because they are intrinsically motivated and have a strong belief in their work, and themselves, they have minimal concern for what others think. Take, for example, noted physicist Richard Feynman, who is known for his curiosity, and unique way of thinking. While in high school, he reinvented his math formulas. Feynman was never afraid to question the experts, even those of the magnitude of Niels Bohr. While listening to Bohr, Working in teams. 140. Give a lecture, Feynman was the only one in the audience to argue with and debate the scientific giant. Ironically, this garnered Bohr's respect, and he requested a meeting with Feynman. Due, in part, to his tenacious quest for understanding and willingness to take risks, Feynman went on to win the Nobel Prize in Physics for Quantum Electrodynamics. Discovery Orientation. Finally, creative individuals possess a discovery orientation. Renowned creativity researcher Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, 1988-1990-1996, made the following observation of creative people. They have the ability to identify problems and explore possible solutions that are only vaguely recognized. Accepting a problem as it is presented means that it is clearly defined, has an accepted method of solution, and has a general ally agreed upon solution, Czech Mihaly, 1990, page 193. In contrast, individuals who approach a problem with a discovery oriented time do not rely upon proven methods or established procedures. They are not bound by convention, instead, they consider a multitude of possibilities as they define the task in their own minds. In a study of 31 art students who had been asked to draw a picture of their choosing, Csikszentmihalyi, 1990, found that those with the discovery orientation considered the widest variety of drawing materials before they started and made the most changes during the task. The drawings of students who had a discovery orientation were higher on originality and aesthetic value than those who viewed the task as a conventional problem. Furthermore, those with the discovery orientation went on to greater levels of artistic success when evaluated 7 and 18 years later. In sum, Creative individuals have the ability to see problems in unique ways in order to produce solutions that are equally unique. The Social and Organizational Context for Creativity Creative ideas are neither developed nor demonstrated in isolation, they are nurtured and expressed in social contexts. Human beings are social creatures, and human behavior can be attributed to a unique synthesis of biological, psychological, and social factors, Dacey and Lennon, 1998. While initial research on creativity focused on individual variables alone, subsequent work has brought in to include social and environmental influences, Amabel, 1990. Leading that perspective has been Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, 1988-1990, an articulate advocate for a system's view of creativity. Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 141 While studying creativity in the traditional context of individual traits and cognitive processes, Csikszentmihalyi, 1988-1990, became convinced of the limitations of a person-centered view. In contrast, he believes that creativity is best understood as the interaction among three subsystems, the person, the domain, and the field. Creativity begins at the level of the person, with his or her natural and learned abilities. Those abilities are then exercised within an existing domain, which poses its own unique structure, 
and expected tie-ins. For example, chess is a domain defined by certain rules, a unique set of vocabulary that players use to communicate with one another, and a reservoir of standard moves and strategies. Within every domain is a field of experts who define excellence and decide whether someone is truly innovative. Commentators, art critics, record executives, chess masters, and experts in every domain are part of the social context that influences what is deemed creative. Returning to our chess example, the most creative players are able to go beyond existing strategies and create their own unique style. But that style operates within a specific domain and is validated by experts in the field. Family Parents, mentors, significant others, and colleagues all contribute to the ability of individuals to fulfill their creative potential. Dacey and Lennon, 1998, Makros and Csikszentmihalyi, 1999. Families are perhaps the most significant social influence on the development of creativity. Dacey and Lennon, 1998. Many of the world's creative geniuses grew up in environments that both supported and challenged them. Gardner, 1993. In interviews with 96 people noted for their creative accomplishments, virtually all of them described their childhood environments as intellectually stimulating and supportive of their talent development. Csikszentmihalyi, 1996. Raw potential is often shaped by disciplined study and practice guided by parents and mentors. Education Education also plays a significant role in the development of creativity. Unfortunately, Educatian can also have an adverse effect. As Dacey and Lennon, 1998, emphatically state, schools suppress creativity, page 69. Early childhood is a critical time in the development of creativity. Fueled by curiosity, children are eager to explore and learn, yet Gardner, 1991, found that when children enter school, they become more cautious and less innovative. It seems that the need to conform to a structured system of externally imposed guidelines can extinguish creative imagination. Distinguished Harvard professor and creativity researcher Teresa Mobble, 1990, tells of how her own experiences in school had a lasting impact on the rest of her life. In Kinder Garden, to her delight, she overheard her teacher tell her mother that she had great potential for artistic creativity. Her first year of school nurtured that potential with liberal access to our art materials and the encouragement to experiment. Unfortunately, her creative expression was discouraged in the first grade when she and her classmates were given pictures of classic paintings and told to copy them. Instead of creative expression, art became an exercise in frustration as students were strictly graded on how well they replicated the paintings. Even years later, when given the opportunity to draw what she wanted, she was told by one of her teachers that she was exercising too much creativity. Sadly, this story captures the potentially negative influence of early education on wonder and creativity. Working in Teams 142 Mentors During adolescence and young adulthood, Mentors play a key role in nurturing the development of creativity. Makros and Chick sent Mihaly, 1999. Mentors can be teachers, role models, parents, or colleagues who provide knowledge, resources, and encouragement. Observing mentors as they process information and solve problems is a tremendous benefit. In this way, the apprentice or novice is exposed to the tacit knowledge and inner processes of the mentor, which are more caught than taught. Ultimately, mentors provide direction and guidance that can have a lasting impact on development. In adulthood, creativity and innovation are often supported and stimulated by colleagues and significant others. The most successful careers of creative people are aided by strong and supportive relationships. Spouses often provide both emotional and financial support to allow the development and expression of creative potential. Makros and Csikszentmihalyi, 1999. Romantic partners can also be a source of inspiration and incur agement. Another important social influence comes from collegial relationships that provide intellectual stimulation and the opportunity for collaboration. Organizations Organizational settings can also have a profound effect on the development and expression of creativity. 
Certain organizational climates nurture creativity, while others destroy it. Amabel, 1990, argues that environments that emphasize evaluation, surveillance, rewards, competition, and restricted choice negatively affect creativity. Thus, while performance-driven command and control hierarchies may improve efficiency, they also hinder Inovitian, Mozzi and Harriman, 2003, Van Gundy, 1984. Therefore, Woodman, Sawyer, and Griffin, 1993, advocate environments that encourage risk-taking, the free exchange of ideas, legitimate conflict, active participation, and the use of intrinsic rather than extrinsic rewards. The most creative organizations have an entrepreneurial culture that empowers employees to take ownership and spawn innovation, Mozzie and Harriman, 2003. Amabel and her colleagues, Amabel, Conti, Kuhn, Lazenby, and Heron, 1996, found that creativity is enhanced when the organizational environment supports the following four conditions. First, risk-taking and innovation should be nurtured at all levels of the organized tie-in. From the boardroom to the production line, all employees should be encouraged to think of ways to improve operating procedures and generate new ideas. Second, creative ideas should be critiqued and evaluated in fair and supportive ways. Most initial ideas will need to be refined and developed, yet a harsh, critical evaluation is a sure way to squelch innovation. Third, creative achievements should be rewarded in ways that validate and communicate the importance of innovation. Appropriate reward structures reinforce organizational values without suggesting that employees be innovative solely for the purpose of recognition or compensation. Finally, innovative organizations should encourage open communication and participative decision-making. Collaboration and the exchange of ideas can create synergy that fosters reflection, learning, and experimentation. Collaboration allows people the opportunity to discuss, debate, and dialogue as they work together. This free exchange of ideas creates a social environment where new perspectives are considered, and innovative solutions can be discovered. Unsurprisingly, a. Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 143 Study of 160 college students showed that their ability to produce unique ideas increased as they were exposed to the creative ideas of others, Dugosh and Paulus, 2005. Contrary to the common image of creative geniuses working in isolation, many great thinkers develop their ideas as they engage in critical dialogue with others. Proposals that are critiqued and challenged force individuals to think more deeply and to find grounds that support their ideas or position. If adequate evidence cannot be found, new ideas and assertions are constructed. When vigorous debate is done with interpersonal sensitivity, unexamined assumptions can be identified, revealing blind spots, and inviting exploration. In this way, groups that encourage dissent and value a multiplicity of perspectives are especially helpful in generating creativity and innovation. Woodman, Sawyer, and Griffin, 1993. In interviews with highly successful and creative scientists, Makros and Csikszentmihalyi, 1999, consistently heard about the value of collaboration in the creative process. For instance, a prominent physicist and author who received both the Max Planck Medal and the National Medal of Science stated, I was able to do creative work collaborating with other people. Most of my work is collaborative. That's how you find out how to do something which hasn't been done before. Collaboration is extremely important, page 205. Another highly successful physicist who won both the Einstein and Niels Bohr prizes said, Usually ideas grow slowly, they're like flowers that have to be tended by reading, and talking with people. If you don't kick things around with people you are out of it. Nobody, I always say, can be anybody without others around, page 205. Reinforcing the importance of dialogue. Another physicist who is a fellow of the Royal Society and a member of the National Academy of Sciences noted, It is only by interacting with other people that you get anything interesting done. Page 205 These prominent scientists not only verbalize the importance of collaboration, their work demonstrates it. Creative collaboration is enhanced when members with different educational or functional backgrounds are placed on cross-functional teams. 
Cross-functional teams consist of members from different departments or areas within an organization who come together to accomplish a specific task. For example, AT&T may assemble a group of accountants, engineers, and salespeople to improve the company's website. That way, different perspectives can be considered. The benefits of cross-functional teams are their ability to act quickly, especially when dealing with complex issues, their creativity, and their ability to learn. Parker, 1994. Cross-functional teams are able to accomplish tasks quickly because the knowledge and skills required to complete the task are represented on the team. Time that would have been spent soliciting various stakeholders outside the Working in teams. 144. Group is reduced. Furthermore, more complex tasks are easier to address when different types of expertise exist in one group. Because each member comes from a different functional background, they bring different perspectives, resulting in greater creative potential. And because members come from various parts of the organization, it is difficult only to advocate for their own group. This helps cross-functional teams focus on customers and the larger organizational mission. However, cross-functional teams are not the answer for every organizational task or challenge. Jen N. Bezrukova, 2004, found that cross-functional groups were most effective when involved in growth-oriented tasks or tasks that emphasize innovation and creativity. The diverse backgrounds of members bring different perspectives to team discussions that can help generate new ideas and unique solutions. In contrast, cross-functional teams did not fare well in stability-oriented tasks, or tasks that emphasized efficiency and hierarchical differentiation over innovation. Essentially, cross-functional teams can generate a wide variety of ideas to complex organizational tasks and problems. Much of their success can be attributed to a rich and unrestricted brainstorming process. Creativity through brainstorming Brainstorming is a common practice for idea generation in teams and organizations. Early researchers such as Alex Osborne, 1953, explored the circumstances under which creativity is optimally nurtured. His colleagues first used the term brainstorm in 1938 when he called a collaboration meeting at his company. Through systematic observation of this and many other meetings, he identified four characteristics of successful brainstorming. A minimal criticism of ideas b frequent free wheeling or free expression of ideas c a large quantity of ideas and d the use of proposed ideas as a catalyst for more ideas unfortunately osborne found that most brainstorming sessions do not have these characteristics consequently brainstorming does not always produce the results teams are capable of achieving group processes such as social loafing evaluation apprehension and product tie-in blocking reduce the effectiveness of group brainstorming. Social loafing is a common problem in which group members withhold their best efforts and most creative ideas because they perceive that others will do the work for them. Harkins and Petty, 1982, found that participants who generated ideas collectively produced fewer ideas than the sum total of ideas that were generated by participants who brainstormed individually. However, in completing difficult tasks, Participants working in a group produced a comparable number of ideas as those who were working alone. This suggests that social loafing is more common when tasks are simple and people do not feel that their work will be missed. In addition, Neistat, Stroba, and Lodwijks, 2006, found that groups tend to insulate individual members from feelings of failure and do not hold them accountable. Since group members do not feel personal failure as keenly, they do not realize that they are performing below standard. Evaluation apprehension is the reluctance to contribute to a discussion out of a fear of being judged or evaluated by others. Most people want to be perceived as competent and to garner the respect of others. So when group members are unsure of the quality of their contribution, they might hold back. In a study conducted by Camacho and Paulus, 1995, Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 145
Evaluation apprehension due to social anxiety caused group members to contribute fewer ideas in a group setting than they would alone. Furthermore, as group size increases, individuals tend to become more intimidated, and therefore withhold their opinions even more. Mullen, Johnson, and Salas, 1991. Production blocking is the logistical reality that when one person is talking, others are blocked from contributing their ideas. In most groups, time is limited and not everyone can speak out on every topic. Deal and Stroba, 1987, found that as members wait for their turn to speak up, they can forget what they were going to say. In addition, the discussion can move on to a different topic while members mentally rehearse what they are going to say, thus missing their opportunity. Neistat, Stroba, and Lodewijk, 2003, support this view with their study on delays. Neistat and his colleagues manipulated weight delays to see how they would affect the number of ideas that were generated by participants. Unpredictable delays were found to reduce the number of idea sequences, also known as semantic clusters, because participants were distracted by the uncertainty of the timing in their chance to contribute. Long delays shortened the length of semantic clusters for the same reason. Although there are challenges to effective brainstorming, groups can take specific steps to improve both the quality and quantity of ideas that are generated, Goldenberg, Larson, and Wiley, 2013. For instance, Hollis, Nakui, Putman, and Brown, 2006, found that taking breaks during brainstorming sessions helped yield more ideas. Breaks should be taken at times when the session loses momentum and ideas have stopped flowing. The number of breaks, meanwhile, should vary with the time apportioned for brainstorming. The use of a facilitator to prompt participants was also found to be helpful. In that way, one person is guiding the process instead of focusing on generating ideas. The use of ground rules such as stay focused on the task, everyone's ideas are important, keep the ideas flowing. No critiquing of ideas until we're done, and quantity over quality can help improve the quantity and quality of ideas. One particularly helpful exercise to enhance group brainstorming is brainwriting, Paulus and Yang, 2000. Brainwriting involves jotting down ideas on slips of paper, and passing them around the group. Members read one another's ideas, and add their own. A variant tie-in of this exercise is to have everyone generate as many ideas as possible by writing each on a post-it note. Then, after a predetermined amount of time, everyone sticks their notes on a whiteboard or public medium for other group members to see. After that, similar ideas are grouped together and collapsed or combined. In this way, a group can create a short list of five to seven strong ideas for further examination and critique. The benefit of allowing everyone in the team to contribute in a systematic and structured format cannot be overstated. In this way, a team of eight people can generate 80-plus ideas on any given topic. This is considerably more than the typical 8 to 10 total number of ideas that are usually generated when the whole group speaks in an unmoderated, free-for-all discussion. Leadership in Action Creativity and innovation help us solve problems and improve our personal and professional lives. They bring about needed change and progress. Isn't it ironic, then, that creativity and innovation are resisted by so many? Within teams, some members actively resist. Working in Teams 146 while others drag their feet, becoming quiet in their reluctance to change and brainstorm new ideas. Team leaders can overcome this resistance by strategically planning for the creative process ahead of time. At the beginning of a proposed brainstorming session, leaders can present specific ground rules and guidelines for the meeting. For example, an agenda might be created that allocates 10 minutes for idea generation, 20 minutes for the systematic reduction of options. 20 minutes for evaluation of a limited number of ideas, and 10 minutes for final voting. During the idea generation phase, it should be emphasized that there will be no criticism, no sarcasm, and no explanations of how or why something won't work. When a rule is violated or the process compromised, the leader can simply remind the team of the rule, get it back on track, and move on. Members have 10 minutes to generate as many ideas as they can. 
At this point in the process, the goal is quantity, and not necessarily quality. After all of the group's ideas have been generated, and publicly displayed on a whiteboard or other visual format, the team can enter the reduction phase. Members are granted a limited number of votes with which to choose their favorite ideas. This can be done by placing a check mark or sticker next to the ideas people are in favor of. After the voting, the ideas with the most votes will be critiqued more closely. If necessary, teams can revote if something is too close to call the first time around. Sometimes, ideas are combined and expanded upon during this phase. Dialogue and thinking outside the box should be encouraged. Next, smaller groups are formed to evaluate the remaining ideas on the shortlist. Each group has 10 minutes to construct an argument in defense of one of the ideas. After each team has presented its proposal, a formal voting process can be used to make the final decision. Members can place stickers on the wall above each of the ideas, or take a vote by hand, or vote yay or nay for each idea. For any number of reasons, members may be resistant to the creative or innovative process. In those cases, leaders may need to sit down with the resistant party one-on-one, -on -one and inquire about why he or she isn't contributing to the group's task. An open, investigative, or inquisitive approach is often the best strategy. This is not the time to put someone who is already defensive on the defensive. The leader can begin by making some observations about how he or she has perceived the member's behavior. For example, the leader might have noticed a pattern of passive behavior or lack of involvement in team discussions, and is interested in getting the member's perspective. Often, the first response will be superficial and vague. But if the leader is able to listen actively, the real issues may emerge. Active listening skills and sincere inquiry can help lead the conversation to the heart of the matter. Eventually, the leader might hear a member vent about why the team has to change what it's doing, or think outside the box, or come up with new ideas. Or a member might say that he or she is just not very creative. In any case, it can be the beginning of a meaningful conversation in which the leader has a better understanding of where the member is coming from. Once the real issues are on the table, the creative process can be engaged to find a way to re-enlist and re-engage the resistant member. The two can brainstorm possible solutions to the problem, choose the best option, and then implement that choice. While this might be a lot of work for the leader, it can yield a higher than average rate of return for his or her effort. Enlisting the entire team in the creative process can be the difference between good teamwork and great teamwork. And modeling it is one of the best ways to teach it. Chapter 7 Creativity and Innovation 147 Key Terms Fluency 136 Flexibility 136 Originality 136 Elaboration 136 Discussion Questions 1. Name and describe the four ways to think divergently according to Guilford. 2. Describe how divergent and convergent thinking styles affect the process of creativity. 3. Describe the four characteristics of creative people, and give an example of each. 4. Name and describe the three subsystems of creativity according to Csikszentmihalyi. 5. What are the four characteristics of successful brainstorming discovered by Osborne? 6. Create a hypothetical group meeting that uses an effective brainstorming strategy. Group Activities Exercise 7.1 Divergent Thinking In groups of four Generate a list of all the possible uses of a red solo cup. You have 10 minutes utes to complete this task, and will be awarded one point for every unique idea. Ideas that are on the list of two or more groups will cancel one another out. After the time is up, declare a winner, and make observations about the process. Exercise 7.2 Brainstorming Exercise Form teams of four students and assigned the roles of task leader and timekeeper to two of the members. The leader should follow the following instructions to identify the best busyness a college student could start to make money, and have fun at the same time. Generate ideas, 4 minutes. 
Each team should have a stack of post-it notes to begin. Each member should silently write down as many ideas as possible, one per post-it. The goal is quantity, not quality. Organize ideas, 10 minutes. Post all the post-it notes on the board, and organize them into categories. Create a short list, 14 minutes. Weigh the relative merits of each idea, and determine the best idea per category. Working in teams, 148. Vote, 4 minutes. Vote for your top three choices by placing a check mark next to those ideas. You can put all three votes on one idea if you feel that strongly. Add up the votes, and determine the group's top idea. After 32 minutes, have each group present its top idea to the class. Discuss this structured brainstorming process, and evaluate the quality of the results. Case 7.2, From Brainstorm to Thunderstorm Starways Technology is a small startup company that has become known for attracting talented programmers to create web applications, apps, for the iPhone. You're working there as a summer intern in apps dev, application development, and the company decides to spend time brainstorming and coming up with five new ideas for apps that it can develop and launch in the coming six months. You walk into the room, and quietly take a seat at the back. When the meeting starts, the CEO and VP of Product Development both give a short presentation together about the goal of the meeting, at which point people start anxiously asking questions. How long do we have? How many downloads are we shooting for? What's our budget? This is going to take a lot of time, what will be done about our overtime issue? You sense that this meeting is rapidly deteriorating into a town hall style complaint fest. Luckily, the CEO brings order by saying, I know you all have questions and concerns. Right now, my primary interest is in identifying the best ideas in the room. So please call them out. We will capture your thoughts, and evaluate them later. Tell us, what are your ideas for apps that we can develop in the next six months? There is silence for a few seconds before the first idea is shouted across the room. Immediately, someone disagrees with the idea, and two new ideas are offered. Before long, it is hard to distinguish between ideas and critiques, and people begin judging the ideas using very different criteria. One group talks louder and more insistently while another starts to withdraw. Several people pull out their technology, and start tapping on the screens, and it is clear to you that this has officially become an unproductive brainstorming session. If this were your meeting, what would you do as the leader to improve, a, the quantity of viable of 